two loaves of bread. Both of them are gonna have the same base recipe, which is my favorite whole wheat loaf. So if you want a whole wheat everyday sandwich loaf, this is my absolute favorite. It's really fail proof. Um, and it's also super easy to turn into uh, one of our family favorites, cinnamon raisin bread. And our goal today is to get that nice swirl in the center of the loaf. We're gonna see if we achieve it. So if you all remember, there's a few baking principles for bread that we talked about in the last episode. And this is going to carry, those four principles, I think it's four, are going to carry out throughout all of the bread we make in this little mini series where if you bake through it with me, by the end, you'll be confident at bread baking basics, and you'll be surprised at how intricate some of the bread ends up for being in the basic category. I'm gonna have to wash this bowl now. <laughs> um, but if you remember what those bread principles are, that pretty much all bread, at least the ones in this series, will require bubbling yeast, window pane test, double, almost double. If you can do those four things, and not really worry so much about time, then you're gonna be doing great. And now the whisk with the hairbrush. So I'm gonna wash this out, rinse the whisk, and we'll be right back. So how we're gonna start, you will find that this recipe is very, very similar to the one we did in the last episode. It's honestly exactly the same, except we're doubling the ingredients and we're adding three quarters of the flour to be whole wheat instead of all of it being all purpose. So let's get started. Right here, I have three cups of warm water, just warm tap water. Who wants to pour this in? All right, we'll let Devona do this one. So I pour, it all in. pour it all in slowly. Hold it, baby Al, can you hold the bowl? All right, baby Al, can you do, we're gonna do two tablespoons yeast. So I'm gonna let the other two who haven't poured anything yet get to do that. Oh, she dipped it in there. I have an apron. My husband just surprised me with this apron and I just love it. All right. Get to the end there so it's hard for it to. Now, Sayla. All right, Sayla, will you pour this in? So we're going to do a half cup. I'll do it. Instead of a quarter cup from last time because we are doubling it. We're going to pour that in slowly. Yay. And all right, Sayla, can you hold this while I pour the honey in and then you can dump it? All right, that's good stirring. So same as last time. What's our first rule, girls? Let the yeast bubble. One of us is gonna have a problem with this. Um, but basically, we just need to let this sit for about 15 or 20 minutes. If it's bubbling, we're good to move on to the next step. So we'll come back in. Hey guys, we are back. I wanted to show you what it is looking like. So we've got the, our bubbling yeast. Let me try to put this back. So next, we are going to add two and a half cups of all-purpose white flour. There's already a one cup measuring cup in here. Devoda, can you do two cups and then I'll do the half? Do you want to help? Try not to make a mess, okay? The reason I'm not doing 100% whole wheat in this, there you go, you can pour that in, is purely for a little bit of the structure for a sandwich bread. You really want it to be softer and a little bit bouncy. Sorry, let me stir the mac and cheese. This will have to boil over. This is, I think, called a dough whisk. Um, but if you could go ahead and start stirring that, I'm gonna open up our whole wheat flour. Forgot to do that off camera. Um, so I'm gonna set her down and she's gonna scream and I'm gonna open it and then I'll pick her back up. All right, here's my measuring cup. So if you'll keep stirring, I am gonna add, so like we talked about last time, there's kind of like a rough <laughs> measurement for the flour so that we just go based on what it feels like so we don't mess up so much. So I'm gonna add whole wheat flour until um, it, it just comes together. We don't want to add tons where it's really dense and hard to knead, but we want to add it till it just comes together. Um, I have written down six and a half cups of whole wheat. It might be six, it might be seven. 
So we're just gonna kind of eyeball it. If you at least, you have to at least get to five. Like, <laughs> if you're, you're not there yet, if you're not at five. Do you wanna pour it in? Okay. Good job. Do you like to pour it in? All right. So I'm gonna start. Oops, I made a mess. <laughs> I'm just gonna start um, folding this bread. And maybe at some point I'll have my husband help me so that <laughs> you can see what I, I'll have him video what I'm actually doing. All right, so we're at the point now. It is cleaning the, the dough off the side of the bowl as I kind of mix it and knead it. That's also what you would look for if you were doing this in a KitchenAid mixer. Um, you'll know it when you see it, when it starts cleaning the dough off of the side of the bowl and it's not all just sticking anymore. So just keep kneading till it comes together. But I'm gonna show you in a few minutes where we're at and then at that point, we're gonna decide if we need to go any further, but I do wanna show you what the bread looks like and the texture you're going for. So, right here, so same as last time, the goal here, this is our bread. Each time we need, we wanna fold it over, okay? So as we add layer upon layer, that adds a lot of strength to our bread structure, okay? So this one's big, so I'm cut, it's doubled. Last time it was single, so I'm using two hands. So, I, I mean, I can do one, but I'll be honest, haven't been to the gym in a while, I've had lots of babies. <laughs> so basically, you wanna push it out, fold it, press. I'm turning it, fold it, press. Push, fold, press. Push, fold, press. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm here to show you the window to pane test. We're not there yet. Um, if you'll see, anytime I try to pull it really thin, it breaks. So I have all these questions all the time of of um, when do we know if we have needed enough? When do you stop needing? What's that all about? And you'll know that you have created enough bonds in your bread and enough strength in the gluten when you can do the window pane test, which is pulling it thin enough to see light through it um, without it ripping. And that's how you know. So I can sit here and tell you, I'm gonna repeat myself from what I said in the last video. I could sit here and tell you, hey, need it for 10 minutes, need it for 15 minutes. But everyone is has different strengths. Um, some of you are more experienced at kneading bread than others. Some of you are brand new to it. It's gonna take you a little longer. Um, I can't tell you the signs of this, but again, the weather does change bread. That's why sometimes I need more flour than other times. Sometimes I need less. Um, the humidity, the temperature, there's a lot that has to do with it. And I think that also affects the kneading a little bit. Um, so if you have any further questions about needing, um, how much to do it, different, um, different techniques, um, go right ahead, comment below, and um, I will try to answer them in the comments and in my next videos. Are you ready to keep kneading? Do you want to do this one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep kneading, and I'll see y'all back when the window pane test is ready. All right, y'all, this is hard to get to show up on the camera. It looks a lot better in person, but you just kind of grab the bread and pull it till it's thin. And once you can see through, light through it, and it's not ripping, then you know it's good. <gasps> Guys, I just realized I never added the salt. I never added the salt to the bread. Okay, if you're watching this, editing Danielle is going to put don't forget to add the salt. I'll realize it later when you're supposed to add it, okay? Um, do what I say, not what I do. So, have
how I'm going to fix that. It'll be a good example to show you how to fix it. I want to make sure it's super well incorporated into this dough. So I conveniently just wash, washed my French rolling pin. So I'm going to roll this out. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, and I'm going to sprinkle the salt. Oh, you spill your juice? Devonna, can you get a towel and wipe that up, please? So I'm going to roll this out thin, as thin as I can get it. It's very gluten-y right now, so it's going to snap back as soon as I lift it up. But I'm going to try to roll it out, and I'm going to sprinkle my salt on top of it, and then I'm going to knead it, um, and hopefully that thoroughly combines it enough that, and it's like spread throughout it evenly enough that we're not going to run into any issues. I wanted to show you one method of letting your bread rise that's a little more foolproof than what we talked about last time. Um, you can get these at any restaurant supply store. Yeah. My mom got this for me for Christmas. It is just a um, clear tub that has measurements on it. It is food grade. It's made for the kitchen. And what I'm going to do, first let me spray it. Got some extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to spray that in here so it doesn't stick. Normally I have two hands. Well, half the time I have two hands. I'm going to try to elegantly pop that in there. And now, what I actually want you to do, if you're really unsure if it's risen twice its size, I want you to kind of press it into this clear bowl or tub, whatever, and you're gonna take a erasable marker and you're gonna draw a line. I'm not left-handed, but you're gonna draw a line on where it was at this point. And that way, you'll be able to even just measure with your fingers where it should be when it doubles. And guess what? It's an expo. This is plastic. You can just erase it. If you won't do it with your fingers, damp cloth will do it just fine. Um, but yeah, that's another method. You can also just put a little piece of masking tape, anything like that. And then that way it'll be really easy to visualize when it's doubled inside. This is how I'm letting my bread rise. I have the light on in the oven. And it looks like we are there, so it's time to take it out. Again, the oven's not on. Oh, I just got my towel dirty. Um, but I just have the light on and I have the door closed just to give it a little more extra humidity and warmth. This honestly, I'm shocked how fast it rose. It only took about 45 minutes. Um, now granted, it's extra humid today because it was raining. And I think the temperature was around 60 outside. Like I was outside just in a t-shirt and leggings and i was even just a little warm which is crazy because just a few days ago there was like snow and ice everywhere <laughs> welcome to east tennessee winter um but anyway i do think that impacted this i think had it been really cold outside my house kind of cold too would have taken an extra about 30 minutes so just kind of keep on an eye, an eye on it i set an alarm for every 15 minutes just to check i let it go at least 30 but then 15 15. So I'm just gonna dump this out. So I'm just gonna kind of flatten out. I wanted to do that anyway to get the bubbles out. If I get it in a bit of a rectangle, feel like it's kind of even all over, that is gonna help me to just kind of eyeball it. I'm just gonna cut it in half. Again, we're doing two loaves. It's the same recipe for both. But we're gonna do one that's cinnamon raisin and one that is just my traditional um, everyday whole wheat sandwich loaf. We have formed a little bit of our log, okay? She's a little uneven here, but that's okay, aren't we all after babies? <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do, make sure, I'm afraid I'm gonna make this a little long. No, we're right on the money. Okay, just a little tighter. And I'm just going to take, I have some extra virgin olive oil. I feel like I should be the makeup lady. <laughs> um, extra virgin olive oil spray, spraying this down. I'm gonna plop this 
loaf of bread into it with the seam side down. This is what we look like. If I were trying to not be real, I'll be honest, I would have made this loaf of bread perfectly smooth on top. It would be like so picturesque, but that's not how I really do it every day. This is an everyday sandwich bread. You all saw me with all my kids. My husband just got home. He's downstairs playing with them in the playroom. I have about 10 more minutes before someone comes up here and cries until I hold them. So I'm just trying to get this done. It's going to be great. It's going to taste amazing. It doesn't always have to be Instagram worthy for it to be a really good product. Okay. So we're done with this one. I'm going to recycle this damp towel that we use um, to rise our flour. And I'm just going to cover this loaf of bread while it sets on my oven, while my oven is rising to 350 degrees. That'll give it a little more warmth. It'll help it rise a little faster. Then we're going to move on to our cinnamon raisin bread. What we're going to do first is we're going to kind of stretch this. It's gonna, that gluten's gonna be activated. So it's gonna be a little more tough than it was before we let it rise. Um, but we want the goal to roll it out into a big rectangle. And then we are going to put cinnamon sugar and raisins onto it. All right, so I've got it all how I want it. Now what we're gonna do, got a bowl here. So I have made a lot of raisin bread and I'm always going for that swirl. I feel like it's a, achievement so <laughs> what we're gonna do i have learned a trick okay i'm going to use dark brown sugar instead of white sugar mixed with cinnamon i'm doing dark brown sugar mixed with cinnamon i'm gonna do one cup unpacked normally you do packed i'm just doing unpacked we're lazy around here okay um and then we are going to do two teaspoons of cinnamon I can pick up my measuring cup. Mine won't fit. All right, there's two teaspoons of cinnamon. And then let me grab, I'm gonna be doing a half teaspoon of ground, <laughs> make it girl again, ground allspice. We really don't wanna go overboard on these spices because they're a lot, okay? And then we're also going to do a half teaspoon I'll pick that up in a minute <laughs> ground nutmeg okay and now I'm just gonna grab a fork and I'm just gonna kind of roughly mix this together so now that we have that I'm gonna take a brush and three tablespoons of melted butter and I'm just going to put this on here. And if you don't have a brush, you can just use your fingers or the back of a spoon. But we're just gonna kind of brush this all over the top of the bread. Now, I don't want you to put it on the very, very edge because that's gonna make it a lot harder for this to stick. So I want you to stop about a half inch from any of the edges, okay? We're just gonna start sprinkling the cinnamon sugar spiced mix all over the top of this bread, okay? I want it to be thick enough that we really get the flavor, but also that we can get that swirl. So sweet, my middle child who's three has already requested that she can stay up tonight until the raisin bread comes out of the oven so that she can have a piece. And she said, with butter, can I have it with butter? Which I thought was very cute. So we'll have to see, but hopefully she can have some before she goes to bed. All right, normally I don't measure the raisins. Um, we're gonna sprinkle these on top too. My husband really does not like nuts in bread. Um, if you do like nuts, I highly recommend adding walnuts. And if you really want to up your game, toast them first before you put them in here. You can just put them in the oven at 350 for about five minutes. You'll smell them. When you smell them, you know you're done. And chop them up, put them in here. Oh, so good. But we're trying to do a family favorite, not change it so much for this. All right, so I'm trying to measure how much I put in <laughs> so that I can tell you guys because I normally don't really measure. 
Um, I'm gonna say three quarters cup is what we're at right now. I'm gonna put this on and see where we're at. Um, but I just kind of sprinkle it on top. My kids love raisins. I actually had, I bought some raisins to make this recipe and I couldn't find them anywhere. And then my kids said that they ate them all. So I actually had to run over to my neighbor's house and just get their raisins so that I could make this recipe today. Uh, so shout out to Zach and Julie, my neighbors, um, who are also, Julie's also my best friend. Um, so that's a very convenient. Um, but yeah, okay, that looks good to me, three quarters cup. So now what we're gonna do, I feel like I should give you all a close-up of this. I'm gonna give you a close-up real quick before I roll it up, okay? All right, here is a close-up of what we're looking at. We have a decently thick layer of the sugar and spice mixture, and we have the raisins throughout. We left about an inch to a half inch of space around the edges so that it's easier to fold without stuff spilling out of it. So, I'm gonna start and I wanna fold this as tightly as I can so that I don't get really big air bubbles in between. I may still end up with some because that's just the nature of how this kind of bread works, but I wanna roll it as tightly as I can, okay? And if it starts sticking, I want you to get a debit card, credit card, whatever, clean it, and then I want you to kind of tuck it under here and fold, tuck it, fold, okay? If it's sticking, that's what I want you to do to keep it from ripping, all right? I have some raisins that are rogue. I'm just gonna tuck them. <laughs> all right, so we're still rolling. All right, we're here at the edge. Picked that up. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna pinch it together, okay? I'm trying to pinch that seam into the bread and this is why we don't cover it with butter or sugar because it'd be really hard to get it to stick. I'm going to roll it over so it's sitting on that seam and we still have, you'll see why I'm feeling wrong about spilling it, we still have these open seams, okay? So I want you to kind of tuck the inside in and we're going to fold the top over to the bottom and we're going to pinch that too, okay? We're going to kind of fold it underneath itself. And we're gonna do the same thing to this side. All right, now I know what you're thinking I'm about to do. You think I'm about to pick this up and put it in the pan. But I am not. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit here for about 15 minutes and the weight of the bread on this surface is going to help it just kind of come together and kind of merge before I move it, okay? This bread has been through a lot in the last few minutes of its life. It's a big portion and it just needs to rest a little bit. And if there's ever an analogy for everyday life from bread, I hope you take it as this. When you've been through a lot, before you move to the next stage, take a breather. Okay, let yourself settle, get grounded, then move on. All right, she has now sat for 15 minutes. She's come together a little more. She even started to rise a little bit. And so now um, I'm just going to very carefully pick it up and put it into my pan that has olive oil in it and try to show it to you. <laughs> Here it is. Now this, you'll, it's a thicker loaf than my other one because we added volume to it. So I'm going to cover this with the other one and let it continue to rise. Just in the time we've done this, I think it's about time for our other loaf to go in the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you. The vent to my oven is right under here. And so while it preheats, I put my bread here so that it can have a little extra warmth and rise a little bit faster. Just wanted to show you that. But here are our loaves. This is a damp cloth. It got dirty in my oven, but we're still using it. Um, this is the sandwich loaf, and this is the cinnamon raisin. The sandwich, I want to make sure you can see. Um, this one's, hold on, baby. Um, this one is thicker than this one, so it has not doubled in size yet because we added volume. But this one is ready to go in the oven. This is our 
whole wheat sandwich loaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in and we're gonna let this one keep rising. Here's our cinnamon raisin loaf. It has risen significantly. It's about double the size. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. All right, so I am now just spreading one tablespoon of melted butter with one tablespoon of honey that I just warmed up in the microwave a little bit onto our cinnamon raisin bread. It has bled a little bit from one of the seals with the brown sugar, butter, and spices and raisins and all that. So that's gonna be dark. It's gonna affect the look of the loaf a little bit, but it is still gonna be beautiful and it is going to taste amazing. We're gonna pop it back in the oven for another 15 minutes. Let's cut into these. I wanna show you all the structure, what you're supposed to be looking for. And I really wanna see if we achieved our swirl here. And for the record, I have let these cool a bit. If you cut them while they're too hot, they're gonna lose a lot of their moisture, which you do not want. Let's see the structure inside. All right, so overall it looks pretty good. I can see where I messed it with the knife on the very bottom. I'm gonna set one of these down so I can show you more properly. So this is really good structure. I'm gonna tap my camera and see if it'll focus for us. There we go. So we've got some big air bubbles throughout here, but nothing so big that it creates a huge bubble where if we try to put a spread on here for making a sandwich, that it's gonna disrupt that. When I press it, it immediately springs back, but it's not so tight that it's not soft. Here we go. Oh, I'm so happy. Look at that. Look at that. You see the chunks of raisins. You see the brown sugar with butter all around. This bread is moist, but it bounced back at my touch. It's folded tightly enough that there's not any huge bubbles here. I consider this bread a success for sure. I'm gonna taste some of our, this falling apart, our raisin bread with butter. Mm. It is so good. It's got that nuttiness from the whole wheat. It's buttery and sweet from the filling. You've got that chewy raisin, the crunchy crust. It's all the notes. It's another day in the life of Danielle as a mom and as a baker. Thank you for joining me for both. I hope you all have a wonderful day, wonderful evening, morning, whenever you're watching this. And I hope you bake some bread. And I hope it makes you feel really good.